good morning uh, my dear students uh, i am going to begin with the second class uh, heat transfer yesterday i discussed about the mode, modes of heat transfer that is a conduction convection and radiation i completed the uh, the related equations uh, and uh, the definition regarding fourier's law of conduction so today in this class i am going to take up some numerical uh, uh, examples or to use those uh, conduction equation convection equation and radiation equation a uh, simple problems i am going to uh, take up now yesterday uh, i shown uh, two uh, questions two examples i completed and uh, now i move on to the third one that is 1.3 the hard surface of material the problem is given like this the hard surface of material is 55 cm thick and uh, thermal conductivity 20 watts per meter degree celsius he exists at a temperature of 200 degree celsius <coughs> if the heat flow across the surface is uh, 300 watts per meter square find the temperature of cold surface it means uh, he has given the following data that k is equal to conductivity of the given material that is 50 mm thickness is having 300 watts meter kelvin if you say that the given value of k is 300 watts per meter degree celsius so this make no difference uh, if it is a degree celsius or a kelvin it makes no difference so the the conductivity of material is given so and also is given the area it means i have to take area is equal to one meter square this unit uh, area you have to take unit area you have to take and also the the length uh, thickness is given thickness is marked as dx is equal to 55 centimeter it should be converted into meter that is 0.55 meter so the here the student have to understand that uh, whatever the unit is given all that is converted to meter if it is centimeter is given you have to convert that into meter since area is not given i am going to consider that area as 1 meter that is unit area I am going to consider. So and also the heat value that is Q heat flux is given that is 300 watts per meter square and ask you to find out the T1 minus T2 T1 minus T2 is equal to question mark because he is asking uh, what you find the temperature of cold surface. So I can, uh, you know the hot surface temperature is 200 degree. That is uh, T1 is 200, you have to find out T2. T1 is 200 degree hot and T2 you have to find. These are the, this is how we have to analyze the data. Suppose if you take, uh, if you consider slab of thickness uh, if you consider the slab of thickness L that is this is the uh, thickness of the slab so this is nothing but dx and the temperature is uh, T1 at this point and T2 at this point this is how the, the flow occurs the temperature this is T1 and this is T2 and this k is the property of the material you need to understand conductivity of material is k that is the property of the material the conductivity k is the property of material so the temperature t1 is at 200 degree celsius and the heat will flow in the down the hill and then it goes out like this at the temperature d2 this you need to find out this is a hard surface this is cold surface we need to find out uh, the cold surface temperature so by using the equation which is shown uh, 
uh, in the problem that is q is equal to minus ka dt by dx so we need to find out first uh, differential temperature by using all these properties so now you have the equation q is equal to minus k a dt by dx this is the equation i am going to use i want dt by dx to be separated that is minus k times a by q q divided by minus k a so i want dt dt is equal to dx minus of multiplied by q by k so you have to substitute all these values as you substitute is uh, so dx is uh, the thickness that is uh, 0.55 minus sin multiplied by q is 300 divided by k is again 300 area is 1 meter square you know that uh, the value of this will come to around 8.25 t2 it means you have got t1 minus t2 here this value you will get like this now we have to uh, find out the uh, t1 minus uh, t2 value so you will get uh, dt is equal to this much you get and substituting the value you can see from that uh, you will have t1 minus uh, tt is equal to 191.75 degrees celsius after simplification you will get that value so this is how we have to analyze the problem now we will go to the next problem what you observe here is that property of the material is more important and uh, the equation one has to remember the equation so and go to the next problem that is uh, problem number 1.4 determine the heat flow across the plane wall of uh, 10 cm thickness with a thermal conductivity of 9 watt per meter degree kelvin kelvin when the surface temperature are steady at 100 degree and 25 degree celsius it means slab having a uh, both the side having a temperature t1 and t2 the wall area is given 4 meter square find also the temperature gradient in the flow direction so we need to find out the uh, temperature gradient dt by dx by first you have to uh, use the equation again you have to use the equation the data is given is dx is equal to 10 cm that you have to convert into 0.1 meter conductivity is given 9 watt per meter kelvin but it is wrongly typed there then t1 is 100 degree and t2 is 25 degree and uh, the wall area is given 4 meter square and dt by dx and q both are you have to both you have to calculate so this is how the calculation now by substituting q is equal to minus k dt by dx you have to substitute the conductivity value as 9 and area is 4 uh, meter square as usual you have to add 4 uh, meter square and dt by dx is 100 minus uh, uh, 25 degree because uh, this is the wall uh, of thickness uh, this is the wall and this is the flow direction for the conduction problem this is t1 and this is t2 here t1 is equal to at this point is t1 wall temperature this is 100 degree celsius and this t2 is 25 degree celsius this is the conductivity value so this is the thickness of the wall dx so now by using equation q is equal to minus ka dt by dx ka conductivity into a 
uh, area exposed normal to the direction of heat flow into the temperature gradient. So, need to find out in this equation Q is equal to question mark and GT by dx is equal to question mark. Both you have to find out. So, using this, uh, uh, you can also. So, by substituting the given value, uh, temperature difference and the thickness in the above equation, dx is again uh, 10 centimeters given, 10 by 100 you have taken and uh, you converted. You will get uh, Q is equal to 2000. 27,000 watts, Q value is equal to 27,000 watts. Again, you substitute back this equation, you can find out the dt by dx and in the next slide I am going to show that how yes, dt by dx is calculated. So, dt by dx is equal to minus k by k a, q by k a. So, q value already determined 2700. 9 by 4, 9 is the conductivity, you multiply it by area 4, you will get a 750 degrees Celsius per meter, it means per meter, this is the temperature gradient that you are going to get or you can directly substitute and calculate dt by dx is equal to, uh, both the equation possibly you can calculate, directly you can use uh, dt by dx, 100 minus 25 divided by 10, you will get 750 degree Celsius or using Q value also you can calculate. Both the uh, possible solutions I have shown and this is the wall thickness. You know that any slab you are taking, you are showing the cross section of the slab and the area exposed normal to the cross section, it is uh, so the area exposed normal to the direction of heat flow is this. This is the heat flow direction and this is the area exposed. It means a total area, this height into the breadth you are going to get. Exposed normal means this is the direction and this is the exposed area. So, and the heat will flow like this as I am showing you the red dot here and then it goes out. It means uh, you will get a gradient, temperature gradient. This is the uh, slope. This gradient is asking that I calculated that is dt by dx is equal to 100 minus 25 divided by 10 divided by 100 is 750 degree Celsius per meter. So, the go to the next uh, uh, problem. One more uh, determine the heat transfer per meter square of plate when the water is uh, water at a mean temperature of 30 degree Celsius flows over flows over it at 80 degree Celsius. The heat transfer coefficient is uh, 250 watts per meter square degree Celsius. It means it is uh, depends, this problem is asked on the convection. It means uh, H value is given, that is heat transfer coefficient H value is given, that is 250 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Here the difference between the conductivity and uh, uh, of the material and convection is only one thing is different that is a scope per convection heat transfer is taken per square meter it means 250 watts per meter square kelvin so conductivity usually any value is there some x value it is watts per meter kelvin only meter is there and here it convection heat transfer coefficient is having a meter square value that you have to remember and uh, if the you are familiar with the units and conversion of units, one, one thing I would like to draw your attention, the, the uh, dear students, here the any equation written should have a homogeneity. It means you have to check the homogeneity of the equation, whether it is right or wrong and then you can proceed with the solving the problem. So, the Q is equal to, the conversion, in this problem, the equation that I am going to use, Q is equal to H A into the temperature difference that is T W minus T infinity, where T W is the wall temperature and T infinity is the air temperature that is outside. So, the, the data is given is 1, here the data given, you can see the uh, data, area is 1 meter square and T infinity, it means air temperature is 30 degree Celsius and wall temperature is 80 degree Celsius and heat transfer coefficient is uh, it is supposed to be 250, it is wrongly typed, it is 100 uh, uh, watt, anyhow, 
I do correct it. This is uh, this is 250. Instead of 100, you can take uh, 250 watts per bit square degree Celsius and uh, Q value you have to calculate. This is how we have to calculate. By substituting mere substitution, you will get 250 into area is 1 meter square into the temperature difference that is given that is 80 minus 30. Surface area is 80 and air temperature is 30. So, you by calculating this, uh, you will get uh, 12,500 watt. So, here instead of uh, 100, you can take uh, 250 because in the problem is given and uh, there is a little correction. There are two typographical mistake is there and 250 degree to 250 watt per meter square uh, degree Celsius you have to take into this equation. Okay. Go to the next problem. Yeah. The heavy water flows inside a 6 centimeter diameter and 2 meter long pipe with its surface temperature maintained at 150 degree Celsius. It means again it is a uh, convection heat transfer coefficient problem. Determine the heat transfer rate from the tube to the water if the heat transfer coefficient between the water and the tube is 2500 watt per meter square degree Celsius and the temperature is 40 degree Celsius. You know that again the uh, slab thickness L is uh, 2 meter and diameter is uh, 6 centimeter. Heavy water flows inside the uh, 6 centimeter diameter pipe. So, it is uh, considering the, the wall of the uh, pipe as a thickness of the wall and you have to calculate by applying a simple equation, but instead of area taking as a uh, linear area, you have to take uh, the circumferential area here because uh, the diameter is at area is equal to pi d l. So, if you are taking a square meter area like this, you are taking expose the area normal to the direction of flow of heat, it is like this. Okay, this is the direction of heat flowing, this is the temperature, and this area you have to consider length into breadth that is in square meter. If it is a tube and it is having a thickness, then you have to take the direction of heat flows normal to the area exposed. The, which is the area exposed? It is a circumferential area exposed normal to the direction from inside to outside the heat is going. So, 2 meter long pipe with the surface pipe with its surface maintained at 150 degree and uh, outside surface is maintained at 40 degree Celsius. Here it is 150 inside temperature, here it is 40 degree. So, it means uh, the heat is flowing all along the direction of the pipe. So, then what you have to do, the area exposed normal to this, the, the entire area you have to take and then you have to do it. See that is pi d l I have taken. Okay, by substituting into the equation, same equation again. What is the change that you are going to incorporate in this is area. Area is equal to pi d l. So, here you substitute the heat transfer coefficient 2500, you multiply it by pi and 6 centimeter is converted into meter again and the L length of the tube, uh, tube is given that is 2 meter directly is given because it is given in centimeter that is converted into meter again 150 degree inside temperature and 40 degree outside temperature that is Tw wall temperature minus the T infinity air temperature. So, you will get an answer. So, this is in terms of a kilowatt you want to write that is 10.362 kilowatt. It means the answer which I have is 10. 3620 watt is that you to convert that into 10.4 kilowatt. See, kilowatt means a small k capital W. Why you writing small k? It is as per the SI unit uh, convention you have to write like this. Q is equal. This is the answer for this problem. Okay.
the two different plasmas I solved on the convection. One is uh, by, by taking the uh, cir circular object, another is a slab that I have. Now, go to uh, problem number 1.7, the surface area is 2 meter square, has the temperature of 200 degree Celsius. It exchanges heat with another surface of 30 degree. Again, uh, degree Celsius by radiation. It is a radiation problem. Two surfaces are kept apart and uh, they are exchanging heat between them. Determine the heat exchange. Assuming that the surface are black bodies, surfaces are black bodies. Also find the value of thermal resistance and equivalent convective coefficient. You know, sigma value you have to assume that there is a Stephen Boltzmann constant 5.667. Sigma is equal to 5.667.97 into 10 raise to minus 8 unit I write written, I am going to write here, this is watt per meter square Kelvin to the power of 4. So, this is what you have to write and uh, temperature is uh, in terms of degree Celsius and T2, inside temperature, one body temperature is uh, 200 degree, another body temperature kept up at is uh, 30 degree and the area that you have considered for 2 H square, you have to calculate Q and H radiation, here H R I am using. H radiation, convective radiation you have to calculate. So, I will go to the next slide where I say you the using the equation Q is equal to sigma A T1 to the power of 4 minus T2 to the power of 4. You substitute the area and sigma in this equation. This is the equation for radiation already a given. So, this equation you substitute and calculate you will get uh, uh, 4, 7, 20113 watt. I think it is point. I think you will get uh, 103. This is 103.6 kilowatt. Okay, right. 303 is digit you have to shift. It is 4.72 kilowatt or 4720.11 watt. So, Q value you have to calculate delta. T by R, where R is the resistance, where R is the resistance that you have to uh, calculate. R is given by delta T by Q. So, this is how the resistance is uh, calculated. So, that is sigma into A is constituted for resistance 1 by R is equal to 1 by R is equal to sigma into A is the resistance. So, this value is getting what this equation is getting modified to this form where R is the resistance 1 by R reciprocal I am going to take and then calculate this degree Celsius per watt. This is the resistance this is the, uh, the value of the heat that is going to offer by the material, it means to between two materials and this is the resistance caused. It means per watt 0 0.036 degree Celsius uh, this is the resistance value and uh, the equation that we are going to give uh, for resistance is R you can take 1 by R is equal to HR into A or R is equal to 1 by of HR into A. Both, the, both the equations are valid, you can use any way you want. So, the, the resistance equation I am going to write and uh, show it to you is that Q is equal to sigma A delta T, this is the equation I used. So, delta T, sigma A delta T is nothing but T, T1 to the power of 4 minus T2 to the power of 4, both the equations are valid. So, now Q is equal to, I can take uh, 1 by R this value I am going to write it as 1 by R into delta T as it is. So, where 1 by R is equal to, where 1 by R is equal to sigma into A. This you have to remember. So, 
so the resistance is also given by 1 by hr into a so this if you substitute you will get the uh, directly the resistance value the resistance value in terms of watt per meter square uh, kelvin hr we are going to calculate hr here by using the resistance value that is convective heat transfer uh, uh, by radiation convective heat transfer by radiation hr is equal to that you are going to calculate that is uh, shown in figure shown in this equation see look at this area see this uh, heat transfer uh, uh, coefficient of by radiation is uh, separated by multiplying the area you will get this answer so there are uh, some more problems are given by equation 8 this is also the one more uh, problem which i solved equation 1.9 sorry example 1.9 and uh, the solutions also given i um, advise the student to go through this one more problem is there uh, this is the uh, stone wall of 100 mm thick with an average value of thermal uh, conductivity 0.2 watt per meter kelvin is exposed on one side heat flux of 200 uh, 2000 watt per meter square heat flux means q is given determine the temperature drop in the wall under a steady state condition if the second condition is if the other side of the wall is exposed to convective heat transfer coefficient of 70 watt per meter square kelvin at 20 degree 27 degrees celsius determine the wall surface temperature this is one condition is asked if the surface is exposed to the explode on the other side to the convective convection and radiation determine the wall surface temperature so this is the problem given the solution and give, uh, data given are t infinity air temperature is 25 degree wall temperature is 70 degree Convective heat transfer coefficient 7 watts per uh, meter square Kelvin and uh, the length of the uh, slab is uh, 1 meter this is 70 I suppose yes so this is what uh, the values are given and it takes uh, time to solve this and these are the, the questions asked convective radiation heat transfer of convection, heat transfer of radiation and the total heat transfer is asking. All the three conditions are solved here. You can also go, this is the first case and this is the second case and this is the third case and after that you have to calculate the combined uh, heat transfer. Heat conducted is equal to heat convected plus heat radiated and it is a you have to need to analyze all the data substituted and calculated here see if you look at here heat conducted is 2000 and convected is ha delta t and radiation is sigma a t to the power of 4 minus t it means this is t1 and t2 and sigma e t infinity is taken here air temperature here also the air temperature it is at the hot side this is at the cold side and this is the radiation to a some wall it means some object is taken this is how we are going to calculate i think uh, i am able to make a the reference by drawing this uh, dot mark red dot mark for explaining so this is first by convection and then the heat is the problem is so peculiar uh, particularly given for conduction convection and radiation so first it is heat is getting converted and then by conduction and then by radiation to the next surface is given so the, what are the temperatures also T1, T2, uh, this is uh, given. Thank you. I will go to the next uh, uh, Now I am going to uh, touch upon the boundary conditions, boundary conditions of uh, first kind and second kind and third kind. It means uh, there are three boundary conditions that you have to take. Yes, uh, in the syllabus he has mentioned that uh, different boundary conditions, 
the first boundary condition, second boundary condition and third boundary condition. The approximate to what is boundary condition first of all you have to need to understand, the student needs to understand. So in any given problem, I already solved few problem in that there are boundary conditions I mentioned. So, say if it is a temperature boundary condition, heat flux boundary condition and also the convective boundary condition. Three boundary conditions are there. Approximate uh, boundary and initial conditions are needed to analyze any uh, conduction problem. It means without boundary condition, you cannot analyze the problem which is given. You need to specify the boundary conditions first. That uh, previous why I uh, taken effort to solve some problem is to just to uh, give a feel that how the problems, uh, simple problems are solved by using uh, the fundamental equations. For that I have made an attempt to solve that. Without boundary condition, without specifying the boundary condition, not understanding the boundary condition, you cannot proceed to solve the numericals. Uh, and uh, effort should be taken first to understand how the boundary conditions are to be specified. So, the any country if you take, uh, there are boundary conditions. It means uh, there are their own boundary condition, international boundaries there. No, India, Pakistan, there is a boundary. Bangladesh and India, there is a boundary. Sri Lanka and India, there is a boundary. It means what the boundary condition, the country, each country will specify their own uh, conditions. Whether citizens of other countries to how they invade into the, uh, without any permission, they cannot uh, cross the boundary. Otherwise, uh, they are taken for uh, legal action. So, this is how the same, the problem also having a boundary condition. You can understand what is boundary condition now. It means any problem is given, you have to specify the boundary condition. This is a simple example I am quoting. See, the approximate and initial boundary condition, if it is needed to analyze any conduction problem, that is the first condition. The initial condition specify the distribution of temperature at the origin at the time t is equal to 0. It means uh, the, at the origin, the time coordinate is t is 0. The boundary condition specify the whether it is a temperature boundary condition. If it is a temperature boundary condition, time will it be affecting the temperature boundary condition or not. That is why we specify the temperature that is time t is equal to 0. Capital T in this uh, abbreviation, capital T is used for temperature, small t is for time. So the one has to understand. Small t is for time. Capital T is for temperature. I am always very specific about degree Celsius or in Kelvin. Both are holds good. Unless otherwise it is specified to take uh, whether it is in Kelvin or temp degree Celsius. The boundary conditions specify the thermal condition at the boundary surface of the region. For example, at a given boundary surface, the distribution of temperature may be prescribed. So, the previous example you have seen that. Uh, in a slab, it is having a temperature boundary condition. T1 is the temperature boundary condition, T2 is the temperature boundary condition at the other end of the slab. So, this is a slab of a thickness L. It may be previously I have taken it as dx. I can take it here after it is L, length of the th boundary condition. See, this is the cross section of the wall. See, the heat will flow like this. It means why it is in decreasing direction, heat will flow in the positive uh, direction of the x coordinate. So, here the this is the prescribed temperature boundary condition on y side. So, that is what if then temperature may be prescribed or distribution of heat flux may be specified. Instead of this, I can also specify q value here. Heat flux is q that is watt per meter square or 3 or there may be a heat transfer by convection into the ambient air at specified temperature with a known heat transfer coefficient. The H can also be mentioned. Here H infinity, heat transfer coefficient other side. Here H1, all you can call it as H2. There are three boundary conditions as specified. Temperature boundary condition, heat flux boundary condition and convective heat transfer coefficient boundary condition. So, these th three boundary conditions are very specific. Let me uh, take up the, uh, the temperature uh, this one now. The boundary conditions are and therefore, the analysis of heat conduction, such physical boundary conditions should be represent with the appropriate math mathematical uh, equations. This boundary condition may be appro approximately approximate uh, mathematical expression and uh, representation of these boundary conditions are need to be understood with uh, uh, specific notations.
see the boundary conditions uh, first boundary condition is the temperature prescribed temperature boundary condition that is the boundary condition of first kind there are no very number of applications are there to understand the temperature boundary condition so you can also specify the uh, temperature boundary uh, conditions uh, for any surface suppose if you take example the ice ice cube if you take it is having a surface temperature of 0 degree otherwise it it go melting on a table if the ice cube is kept okay this is ice what is the temperature it is at 0 degree celsius this is one uh, uh, you know you have to specify it is already exist at 0 degree one has to whether it to specify the ice temperature no it is not uh, necessary to specify the ice temperature it is at 0 degree surface is when it is exposed to the air or open atmosphere if it is in the uh, refrigerator and it is having a different temperature when you take an, take it out the ice and then keep it on a table and is exposed to the air and the temperature become 0 degree okay this is the specified temperature or distribution at the boundary surface may be a known as a function of time it means that this temperature becomes continues to become 0 degree until the entire ice get melted out it means become water and it continues to be a 0 degree only time is there how long it will take time to melt you have to count it it is a function of time only this boundary surface may be known as a function of time because it has to take uh, some time to melt isn't it it has to get absorbed the heat by the surrounding and start melting it finally it become water water when is it converted then you have to specify the different boundary condition water temperature may may be 1 degree 2 degree 3 degree it may increases but as long as ice is there the two condition that is it is a time dependent function it means temperature is a time dependent function now because it keep on melting this is the one and uh, uh, what are the variables that you are understanding in the uh, first boundary condition is that temperature and time temperature and time and the space and the, the thickness is also a bit considered okay that i am going to take that first boundary condition the next uh, coming slide so you know, temperature is the function of x x is the distance and t is the time consider a plate of thickness L as shown in figure 1.4 this equation I am going to write T is a function of and uh, T at X is equal to 0 and T is equal to T this is one boundary condition another boundary condition, boundary condition is T X comma T is equal to T so we have to specify what is the time limit that you are going to uh, take that it means i am going to take at l what is the time it's going to transfer so there are two equations the equation 1.6a and the x is equal to l what is the x value x ranges from 0 to l x ranges from 0 to l that is how you are going to take slab slab of thickness uh, l so x is equal to 0 at this point and x is equal to l at this point therefore the distance total distance of this is l can you able to see this okay x is uh, it is at this point i am counting right from left to right the distance x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l so this is the uh, distance now we call it as when x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 time t is equal to also 0 then what is the temperature at this point at x is equal to 0 now this is the temperature t1 i'll call this as the temperature t1 when x x is equal to l then i will call it as temperature t2 if the t remains constant okay so look at that consider a plate of thickness l as illustrated in figure 4 Suppose the boundary conditions at x is equal to 0 maintained at a temperature T1 and x is equal to L and uniform temperature T2. It means uh, the boundary condition you have to specify at what length temperature is there. 
at what uh, uh, at initial condition at initial length of the slab what is the temperature you have to specify it if not you have to specify the one condition and give the material that is another uh, property property of the material is known to you you can also calculate by using this this is called the initial boundary condition and that can be written like this in more general case the distribution of temperature of boundary may be specified as a function of time only position and time because i am talking about x and t this is the position t is the time both are necessary to specify the first boundary condition and it is said to be when this condition exists the value of temperature is preserved the boundary surface the boundary condition is said to be of first kind so that you are going to say it may be applicable to a slab it may be applicable to cylinder it may be applicable to spher spherical object also why you are only taking these uh, three objects only into consideration you may ask questions sir only you are considering a slab cylinder and the sphere yeah see why i am taking is these are the general geometry exist uh, generally the geometrical configuration exists in nature we are uh, familiar with the tubes that is cylindrical in shape you are familiar with the sphere it means where do you use a sphere for heat transfer most of the nuclear reactor domes you have seen that is there is spherical in shape there we are using uh, this and also some uh, military applications we are manufacturing ammunition we also use uh, spherical uh, objects and uh, and the sphere is uh, one of the complex geometry that we are going to uh, use it for uh, the special applications and you know the me mechanical engineering students are familiar with the uh, bearings roller bearings ball bearings they are also you are using that so ball bearings are used extensively in the uh, uh, automobile engineering and uh, you need to understand the property of the ball then how much is the heat transfer from inside to outside that also you have to calculate and uh, hardness when you give the hardness to the balls then you have to apply these conditions to analyze the how the wear and tear are going to occur what happens to the material property also if the temperature is varied abruptly all those things are taken into consideration so i am going to so this is how the uh, prescribed temperature at the boundary surface of first kind is specified it means temperature t at x is equal to position and time and x is equal to 0 means x is equal to 0 this is x is equal to l in the direction of x only it means x varies from 0 to l and uh, this is the time at x is equal to l and time t is equal to t only so when uh, it is specified that x is equal to l the temperature is t2 it means at this point you can immediately simply you have to specify at zero is, at x is equal to 0 t1 at x is equal to l is t2 this is how we have to specify so prescribed heat flux boundary condition that is a boundary condition of second kind first i'll take up the uh, figure uh, make it to understand the better and how the uh, the figure looks like so this is the conduction heat flux this is the, the equation that i am using k a dt by dx is equal to x is equal to 0 a is not there it means a unit area you are going to take and then and it is a conduction heat flux that is q0 a is taken q0 is taken here it is q0 is taken what is that q0 small q 0 or q naught we call it as so you know that k a q is equal to k a d t by d x is the equation I will take the a to the left side and you will get only right side you will get uh, dt by dx so this value is again it is written as q q0 what is q0 it is a heat, heat flux or conduction heat flux you call it as that is q by a capital q by a. 
Q is the rate of heat flow in watts per meter square. Here is now what you get out of this is only a watt you get because uh, Q is in watt per meter square and uh, watt per meter Kelvin is the conductivity value and uh, dt by dx value that is degree Celsius by meter it is uh, dt by dx. So if the Q naught is there that is written only watt. So this is of the units are going to be written. I think you are able to see this that Q naught is equal to in terms of fat. I am going to write here Q naught is equal to Q by A. Q is watt for meter square and uh, Q is in watt and this is 1 by meter square. You will get uh, Watt per meter square. The unit consistency is maintained, and you can substitute also. You can verify, and I, I draw your attention to go through once. Keep writing the units for all the variables in the equation, and the units. Most of most of the students will commit in the examination that they will never write a proper, appropriate unit in before the equation. They write equations. They write answer but they fail to write the unit for answer thereby you lose maximum marks okay see the effort is taken to to represent the prescribed heat flux at boundary conditions of a second kind one is the slab i taken another one is a spherical or the cylindrical object which i have taken it may be applied to sphere and it may be as uh, cylindrical both are applicable here it means instead of L, what I am taking here, I am taking it radius R. Here Ri, inside radius, here this R0 is outside radius. So it means two radius I have taken, one is Ri, another one is R0. So the, the equations have to, instead of dx, I am using dr. Here I am instead of dx, I am using dr. At R is equal to R0, at R is equal to R1, or R out, outside uh, radius. Heat supply may occur from outside to inside or inside to outside both the cases are possible here both i have shown so it may be heat is coming from outside to inside or inside to outside both the direction which i shown if the direction is in the positive direction of x then heat is going out of the system when it is coming inside it is coming inside the system same similarly here it is going out heat is coming in so this is how we have to uh, consider for hollow sphere, uh, cylinder or sphere. So, come back to the uh, previous, uh, let me understand the, so that is what you understand this equation you have to see the, the convection heat flux from fluid uh, T1 where the surface at x is equal to 0 is equal to conduction heat flux from the surface at x is equal to 0 in the plate. So, there are two equations. One is how the heat is coming out from air to the wall, wall to the outside. So, that I am going to represent here. This equation is very important. Convection heat flux from the fluid. It means if this is the slab, if this is the slab, First, will come the heat will come by convection, and get into that it is conduction. So both the cases are possible here, and that is what I represented here. So first is by convection, H A at T naught the pre. The fluid flow is there and heat is gained by convection from the air and then it is getting conducted. Similarly, the conduction heat may be possible from inside to outside to inside. First is by air and then slowly it is getting uh, heated up and then transferring to inside. The fluid, this three arrow mark which I shown is the flow of fluid near the vicinity of the wall, the hot air, maybe a cold air, 
here if it is hot air the direction of flow is like this this is the equation that i am going to write ha delta t k a dt by dx a is the unit area that you are going to consider because area is not important here because all the time i am going to consider it as a unit area so this is the second kind and uh, go to the boundary condition this is also a second kind but is ha instead of h here the radius r i and r naught okay convection heat flux is equal to the conduction heat flux this is the second that is convection boundary condition of second kind so the third kind is that uh, this is what the equation which i given at temperature t2 I think uh, I skipped uh, slide maybe one minute. Huh? Please cooperate with me that I am going to check whether the slides are convection boundary conditions, boundary condition of third kind. Uh, this is the first kind. I'll come back again. So now we'll go it. In the this is the second boundary condition that is prescribed heat flux boundary condition is the second boundary condition. Convection boundary condition is the uh, this is the second boundary condition. The second boundary condition with heat flux I am talking about heat supply conduction flux is there that is the second boundary condition if the convection boundary conditions are given there is q naught and ql q naught is the heat flux at the second at the x is equal to 0 and ql is the heat flux at length is equal to l and this is the ql and this is the second boundary condition that's what conversely the negative is also force q naught and ql implies heat removal from the medium when the heat flux prescribed the boundary surface uh, said to be a second kind. It may be heat removal or heat gaining. Both are there. Uh, both the direction as I have shown. So this is the convection boundary condition of third kind. That is uh, already explained. Now instead of uh, heat flux, you are go going to use convection heat transfer coefficient. The first prescribed condition is temperature. Second prescribed condition is heat flux. Third uh, prescribed uh, condition for the boundary condition for the case is that convection uh, heat flux is equal to conduction heat flux. This is what uh, you have to remember. And uh, in the examination, it may be asked to write a short notes on all the three boundary conditions. You need to explain by writing this figure. This is the heat flux situation that I am going to write. It means uh, I am going to separately write on the board uh, the, all the three conditions. So the first heat boundary condition is T x comma T is equal to T x comma T zero comma T is equal to T one T x comma T is equal to T L comma T is equal to T two. This is the preferred temperature boundary condition. Okay. The Q naught is equal to minus K A dt by D S at x is equal to 0 and ql is equal to minus ka dt by dx at x is equal to l this is second boundary condition this is the first boundary condition the third boundary condition that i am going to write is ha h0 a T infinity minus Q1 is equal to K dt by dx at x is equal to 0. This is one uh, uh, convective heat boundary, convection heat transfer uh, boundary condition. So another thing is HL into A T, in, T wall minus T infinity is equal to K dt by dx at x is equal to L. These are all uh, things I have written for slab. Replace x with the r, r is equal to ri, r is equal to r naught. That is for 
spherical and hollow cylinder. Hollow, both are hollow. Hollow sphere and hollow cylinder that we are going to use. You have to replace x is equal to 0 you are writing now. You have to write r is equal to ri, r is equal to r naught. Ri stands for inside radius, R0 stands for outside radius of cylinder or sphere. So, this is the third boundary condition. I think made an effort to make you understand that this is the temperature distribution boundary condition, this is the heat flux boundary condition and this is convective heat boundary condition. All the three are holds good for any situation of the problem which you are going to solve, first you have to specify the boundary condition, then you take up for solving. If you do not have specified the boundary conditions, it is very difficult to solve any of the problem. If any one is missing, then you have to assume and then solve the problem. Either it should be property should be known or temperature should be known, either heat flux should be known or conductivity or the property of the fluid should be known. Here in this case, here see, look at this, how many variables are? All these variables, any one variable is missing, you can calculate the other variable. If the two unknowns are given, then you have to go for simultaneous equation to solve it. But it has become a complex situation. Any equation, so you know, Q is equal to K dt by dx. How many variables are there? Q is a one variable, K is another variable, A is another variable, dt by dx are two variables. There are five variables are there. You need to remember four variables in an equation, it should be given for conduction. Similarly, for convection also 1, 2, 3, 4, another one is 5, 5 variables should be there, okay. So now, I will move back, move to the combined heat transfer mechanism. It means, uh, assume any one uh, uh, mechanism, in many practical situations, the, all the three heat transfer uh, um, relations are holds good because uh, the practical situation, we will never able to predict what is the condition of the practical situation. It may be a convective boundary condition, it may be a, a heat, heat flux uh, a condition, it may be a convective heat bond temperature distribution condition. It means all the three conditions should be known to you. So, then only able to analyze. So, suppose you will made an effort to uh, combine all the three heat transfer mechanism into a one and then see oh, how the figure which I illustrates the all the three mechanisms. So, this is how the small object is taken that is a uh, area A, this is the small object which I have taken, this is the small area and uh, plate area is A, the emissivity is epsilon at uh, T infinity, I do not know, T wall it is. So, this object which is kept, that plate is kept on the floor and it is surrounded by the boundary which I shown here, this is surrounded by the boundary and it emits radiation to the surrounding T infinity and it submits, it also convects the heat through air, I, property of the air is, it is at T infinity and having a heat transfer coefficient H. This surrounding area is also radiates heat, this also radiates heat at, it means the surrounding temperature. How many are there? First it, heat has to be conducted here and then radiated and then convected out. All the three mechanisms are explained here. That is why given the emissivity epsilon of the body at the temperature T wall. It means simultaneous convection radiation are occurring. If there is a heat conducted in the plate, then only it can able to radiate and then only able to convect the heat out. So, that means all the three combined mechanisms are explained here. And the equations are there, heat conducted, heat flux in the wall is equated to, it is, again it is dissipated. When the, once the heat is, example is that you can take the iron box, example of iron box, you are using for ironing your cloth at home. And once the heat flux is imparted to the iron box, that is QW, that is watt per meter square area, that is the amount of electric energy supplied to the iron box. You come, you be, imagine that heat flux, 
combined mechanism the iron box is the best example to quote so the heat flux is qw and the, you know that when you take a you cannot touch the iron box whether it is hot or cold to check it that what you see is just you will take the your hand near to the near to the iron box like this if this is the iron box it is having electric connection and it is kept on a side and this is the iron box you cannot touch here with it to see that what do you see you will bring the hand to near to either iron box and you will feel some sensation of hotness to your finger immediately you assume that there is very hot the iron surface is very hot how do you feel it the heat is already accumulated through the molecular motion of the air and it is accumulated and also you kept away from that here also if you keep your finger like this hand here like this you will get some radiation it means some heat is getting radiated to your finger it means both are possible case first heat is connected by coil here connected to a wire this coil will generate energy and it will uh, transfer that uh, heat to the first surface and then uh, to the conduction and radiation. I am sorry. 